Welcome to Reflections, a show that seeks to examine if others see God in your reflection and how scripture relates to us in this day and age. Peace and all God's blessings be with you. I am Father Bob Janine, the pastor of Mission St. Sergius and Bacchus, an all-inclusive, welcoming, affirming ministry of the Order Franciscans of Mercy of the Reformed Catholic Church. Today, we are going to be reflecting on the readings for the 23rd Sunday of Ordinary Time. And you will find these readings in Wisdom, Chapter 9, Psalm 90, Philemon 9, and Luke 14. Brethren, if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be made desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. Wow, those are powerful words. Powerful words, and they're taken from 1 Thessalonians. And it gives us a few examples of the negative is often things that were stated there are often overtaken by many people in this 21st century. Do not be made desirous of vain glory. A few weeks back, the homily was entitled, Vanity, O Vanities. And we talked about what vanity is. And it's a lot more than just your physical appearance. And people today go around a lot. Some high officials in government even go around provoking one another. I don't know about you, but even in, in, in the debates, we see our people who are aspiring to become president of the United States, and they're at each other, they're provoking one another. That's not the right way to get about good things. And we certainly should not be envying one another. You know, the idea of the grass is always greener on the other side. No, 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 no. Uh, and this is very common today. Your next door neighbor just got a 50 or a 60 inch TV. And all you've got is a little 24 inch TV. I better, I got to get a big one and my children will be down and depressed because they don't have the great big picture that their next door neighbor has. I've seen it. I've heard it. We're not supposed to do that. Let us not be desirous of vain glory. Yet so many people go about and go out of their way, even to the point of breaking the law, to receive 15 minutes of fame. They want to be famous. You know, I have to tell you, being famous is not easy. It's not fun. And if you talk to those who are famous, especially those who are a good heart and, and are lasting famous people, you will find that they would rather people not be able to recognize them, that they would be able to be like living normal people, what they call normal people, because it's, it's difficult. Fame is not all that it is chalked up to be. And if you've ever had a brief moment of fame, you'll know what I'm talking about. Others seem to break the second admo admonition by believing 
that they are much better. I'm much better than, oh, please, that person. I don't want to associate with them. They're not my kind of people. <laughs> I'm sorry. We are all equal. You may not believe it and you may not think it. But we're all equal. We're all children of God. Whether you are Catholic or you're Muslim or you're Jew or you're Buddhist or you're Sheikh, you're all children of God. And therefore, we are all equal. We are all brothers and sisters. And that is why we have to start treating each other with respect and dignity. God judges us by our actions and by our connection, connectivity with him. God judges us by how we live our lives. Do we give of ourselves? Do we share the blessings that God gives us? The first reading from the 20, for the 23rd Sunday of Ordinary Time happens to come from one of my favorite books of the Bible, the Book of Wisdom. Chapter 9, verses 13 through 18, and it says, Who can know God's counsel, or who can conceive what the Lord intends? For the deliberations of mortals are timid and unsure are our plans. For the corruptible body burdens the soul and the earthen shelter weighs down the mind that many has many concerns. And scarce do we guess the things on earth and what is within our grasp we find with difficulty. But when things are in heaven, who can search them out? Or who can ever know your counsel except you had given wisdom and sent your Holy Spirit from on high, and thus were the paths of those on earth made straight. There are many clergy and others like Glenn Beck and Sarah Palin that seem to believe that they know exactly what God has in mind when he created all things. They know it all. They know who's going to be in heaven and who's not. They know that this person was made for greatness and that person should be cast aside or used as a slave. Excuse me? We're all equal. Nobody should be subservient to another. Everyone should be respected. We need to listen to one another. We need to communicate with one another. Throughout history, Great and pious men and women, like our seraphic father, St. Francis, whose feast honoring the stigmata will be September 17th, and St. Clair, whose feast day we recently celebrated, came forward to denounce the excesses of the church. And even Pope Francis, has chastised his bishops and priests for seeking to be glorified and wearing ermines and satins and silks 
He even advised the manufacturers of church vestments to simplify and to make them more affordable. There have been saints throughout history who have attempted to remind the church and the faithful of the teachings of Christ found in the Sermon on the Mount that we covered last week. Even Martin Luther, who was thrown out of the church because he went and posted a whole lot of things that the church was doing wrong. They threw him out. So, the Lutheran Church was established, which, by the way, recently had its 500th anniversary, and Pope Francis went and celebrated the 500th anniversary, making statements almost akin to the fact that Martin Luther was, should be probably considered as a saint. You know, I've got to remind you, Last week we talked about the Sermon on the Mount, and I broke it down. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they shall be comforted. And we know certainly in this country we've had a lot of reasons and a lot of occasions to mourn. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure of heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Our government leaders need to spend a little more time seeking peace and not causing dissension. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, like Jesus Christ, persecuted, crucified, because he was preaching the will of God and what is right. Blessed are they who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And in the corporal, you know, the corporal works of mercy, we don't talk enough about them. And a lot of people say, well, what are they? I don't know what they are. Okay. There are seven ways in which we can serve God and all of God's children. They are feed the hungry, give drink to the thirsty, clothe the naked, shelter the homeless, visit the sick, visit those in prison, and bury the dead. You know, St. Francis took that teaching of Christ to heart, and it is found all throughout his rule. We as Franciscans are to feed the hungry, and we strive to do that as often as we can. In fact, last week I think I talked about how I try to put together food and bring it to people who don't have and also to supply food pantries because there's always a shortage there. Give drink to the thirsty. Same thing. Clothe the naked. And I have to tell you, our brother Jens has gone about on the streets of New York and down in Florida and is attempting to do the same since he's moved up here and is living in Upton now, about, I'd say, maybe 300 yards away from where I live. And 
as always, putting together clothing, especially for the winter months, thermal waterproof socks, some thermal sleeping bags, and jackets and sweaters so he can give them to somebody when he sees that they don't have adequate clothing for our cold weather. Shelter the homeless. We have been wanting so long to try to find a place where we could have a homeless shelter. But it costs a lot of money and we just don't have it. Visit the sick. Do that all the time. Visit those in prison. Do that all the time. And finally, bury the dead. And since January, I've had over 18 funerals. So, it is the work of the Franciscan community and the Order of Franciscans of Mercy and all Franciscan communities and mostly all religious communities. If they're not into teaching, they're usually into living the corporal works of mercy. God is going to judge us on how well we've lived his teachings as given to us by his beloved son, our Lord Jesus Christ. He's going to judge us on whether our deeds and actions matched those of the teachings. We're going to be asked if we sowed seeds of love for God, if we practiced compassion towards the, those in need. Did we understand and accept the differences created by God? You know, not everyone is a white Aryan. God created people of many shades and colors and from many nations and countries. And some, and this country, this country was built on those who are ex escaping oppression and coming here for a better life. And it continues today, but there are people who want to drive them away. God is going to judge us on how well we live. Do we speak out against injustice and speak out for equality for all people? Do we try to prevent and speak out against violence and war and the other atrocities that are being committed against God's children? Do we speak out and practice and strive to be ecologically correct, to take care of this planet that God gave us? He gave us this planet for us to be caretakers of, not destroy it. We have huge areas, some icebergs or, or, or glaciers as big as the state of K Kentucky that are about to fall into the sea. The, the oceans are rising. In New England, in New England, our water temperature this summer is the hottest it's ever been off Boston. It registered at the end of July at 76 degrees, and we still had all the heat of August and some of September to go through. And that is why there are so many shark sightings and even a whale in Boston Harbor. They're coming north because the waters are warmer. A whole ecological system is thrown off. Massachusetts had the hottest July in history ever since records were kept this year. And it's been the hottest around the country. There is global warming and all because we fail to take care of our planet. We keep burning coal, putting emissions into the air. We, and we don't use the technologies that we have available. 
that can cut down on emissions. There are sea life that are being sna- and trapped in plastic that somehow gotten into the ocean. We're not doing a good job. We need to follow in the footsteps of people like St. Francis, St. Clair, Mother Teresa of Calcutta, Gandhi, There are wonderful examples as to how we should be living our lives, but we don't seem to want to do it. And in the reading from Wisdom, it says, For the corruptible body burdens the soul, and the earth and shelter weighs down the mind that has many concerns. Wisdom written way before even the birth of Christ knew and foretells what's going on. We need wisdom. We need to pray for wisdom. God, one of my nightly prayers, I constantly am asking God, grant me wisdom, understanding, knowledge, piety, and fear of the Lord. Grant me these gifts. Help me to understand what is best and what is your way. The Gospel from Luke, chapter 14. If anyone comes to me, oh, this is a good one, and this is one that people are constantly, yeah, see? See what Christ is asking you to do? They take it literally For the corruptible, uh, I'm sorry, if anyone comes to me without hating his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, and even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. It doesn't mean we're supposed to hate, really hate them the way we know hate. It means that we shouldn't be happy. We shouldn't be joyous. We need, yeah, we love our parents. We love our children. We need to care for them. Not hate them like we don't want to be near them, but we want to be closer to God first. We want to be closer to Jesus Christ first. God is first in our lives. And then comes mother, father, brother, sister, husband, wife, child, friends, neighbors, and so forth. God is first and then down the line. That's what that means. Any one of you who does not renounce all his possessions cannot be my disciple. Again, we should not put our possessions before God. And we should look at them and say, do we need all this stuff? And trust me, I'm constantly looking and saying, okay, why do I keep this? Well, I keep it because it reminds me of the person who gave it to me. All right, maybe I'll keep it. But you need to, what do I need? What do I need to sustain my life? What Christ is telling us is that we need to put aside our own desires and supposed needs and put God first. First and foremost in our thoughts, in our words, in our deeds, in our actions. The the only way to discover what lies ahead for us in heaven is to attempt, as well as we mere mortals can, 
to live our lives in a manner that follows the way of Christ. The way of the apostles and the great saints like St. Francis, St. Benedict, Mother Teresa of Calcutta, St. Vincent de Paul, Gandhi, Brother Roger of Taizé, Mother Martin Luther King, Father Michael Judge, the first fatality of 9-11, a Franciscan brother from Holy Name Province in New York who gave his life doing the work of God. All of them, all of them put others well before themselves and often, often suffered as Christ suffered for doing so. They were willing to carry the cross given them as we need to try to carry the cross given to us. Your cross can be many things. Your cross can be that you're not rich, that you have to struggle for everything. Your cross can be that you're always constantly in pain. Your cross can be that you have other illnesses and you're constantly trying to fight them with doctors and maybe chemotherapy or other, uh, you know, dialysis. Like my son is, has to use dialysis in order to stay alive. So that is what